Gentlemen, in this episode of This Should Only Take 10 Minutes, I'm going to be going through what you should continue doing to accelerate the destruction of your joints. Why is this important? If you give this video your full attention, you are going to understand what you do regularly which accelerates the decline of your joints. Who the hell am I? My name is Paul Green and I'm a former British paratrooper and Special Forces Support Group Operator. I've spent most of the past decade being a specialist in physical training and I've delivered physical training to thousands of elite individuals across the Parachute Regiment, the Royal Marines and the RAF. In my time, I have noticed a lot of things and I'm hoping that my experience adds a little bit more weight to the words that I'm saying. It is important that you listen because ACL reconstruction, £12,000, shoulder surgery, £14,000, elbow surgery, £3,000, keyhole knee surgery, £2,500. So the plan of this video and my promise, you are going to understand the different things that you do in order to speed up the process that we've just talked about. You're going to always, with me, you're going to understand the whys. Um, these processes do speed up the destruction of your joints. And because I am generous, I will give you the solution to all of these things later on in the video. Does that sound good to you? Because it's important. Let's go. I'm going to go over here this time. Right, reason number one. I'm too old. So I'm not going to do anything about it. Like I said earlier on, your type 2 muscle fibres, your type 2B muscle fibres are slowly declining. They are declining whether you do something about it or not. If you do not do anything about it, and you just decide to, to rest then this, the problem isn't getting rectified. The, the power, muscle fibres, speed and strength, they aren't getting trained. They are just going to continue to decline at a rate of somebody that's very lazy. I'm not going to labour on this point too much because this is the most common thing. This attitude, I'm old, my joints are already sore, so I'm going to rest, I'm going to do nothing. It's pretty obvious to see why this doesn't actually add any value. Reason number two. Weak muscles, weak joints. If you were to actually look back on what you do during the day you, um, you get out of bed you know maybe make a cup of tea have some biscuits have some breakfast go to work drive to work you know however long you work in days finish work go back home maybe watch some tv have some tea have some lunch dinner whatever you want to do watch some tv go to bed if you think about that whole day and you think how much movement your joints have actually had, how much load that you've had to lift, and specifically how much you have had to work with load through a full range of motion. Now, typically, you don't really have to you don't really have to work through a full range of motion in normal day to day living, and this leads to weak muscles and weak joints. Um, because you aren't conscious and because you are not in full control of your joints and what actually happens and the resistance and the load that you put through them, over time they just become weak because you're not conscious of it, you're just not actually training it and they become weak over time. I wish I could just press next, but it doesn't work. Reason number three. 
Uh, one of my previous videos, I looked at the leaderboards for age um, on the Ironman World Championships. And like number one was like 45 year old, number two, 55, number three, 35, and just kept going down. I don't know what it is, but as people get old, they make this shift. It's like, I say old. When people start to get to about 35, 40, I don't know whether it's a midlife crisis, but it's like, I want to do a half marathon. I want to do a London marathon. I want to do an Ironman. They make this like shift from strength, power, speed to endurance. And endurance is easier, but endurance is more time consuming. The shift into excessive endurance training or aerobic training has its benefits. But are you doing any endurance training through a full range of motion? When I, what I mean by full range of motion, the elbow is a hinge joint. That is full range of motion, fully straight, fully flexed. Do you do that with the knee as well? There's two of the main major joints which cause people dramas. Endurance training, for example, running, jogging, doesn't even scratch the surface on range of motion. And aerobic training, like spinning classes, anyway, I'll get into fitness classes later on. But excessive endurance training how about the age of 40 like I said then type 2 B muscle fibres do start to slowly decline and diminish but your endurance muscle fibres your type 1 muscle fibres they don't go they don't they don't decline they stay the same so endurance training will improve your type 1 muscle fibres but the other ones will go down it doesn't really address the issue Aerobic training links in with muscular endurance training and endurance training. That's why I put that on there. You know, you, you're um, jogging, I don't know, hill walking, um, cycling, mountain biking, um, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, could I say rock climbing? Maybe not rock climbing because rock... Anyway, start to think about your hobbies which are kind of endurance based. Uh, number four, high impact sports and hobbies. Gents, my online coaching service is designed to facilitate and maximise the amount of time that you do your hobbies. Because I believe hobbies have a massive part to play in your mental health. However, these sports and hobbies will damage your joints over time because the forces that go through them over time you're not in control of all the variables you know combat sports football rugby you're not always in control of what happens um, why this has an impact on your joints because if your joints aren't ready to absorb the demands that you place on them with these sports and hobbies if they're not best suited it's going to have a negative effect on, on the muscles and the joints. Um, hope you understand that. Just scratching the surface here. Reason number five, fitness classes. So, your typical fitness classes in the gym, you go pick up a barbell, pick up a light weight, and you'll do all these different exercises for like a minute, and then you'll change exercise, you'll do another exercise for another minute. An endurance burst. Um, you know, you get a bit of a sweat on, you get a bit of a blowout, you work your heart and lungs, and that's about it. Other fitness classes, yoga, um, you work your, you work your, probably your, the isometric strength, which is when your muscle is tensing, but it's at its lengthened position. You, you know, you kind of improve your mobility a little bit with yoga, and in the faster variations of yoga, you will, you will get a little bit more fit and a little tiny bit more strong. However, are you working all three muscle contractions through their full range of motion predominantly in these classes? Or is it, is it pretty bad? So fitness classes, they 
aren't individualized training you know i've got diane in front of me she's 45 she's come to um she used to come to a mad crazy blast session and it's a it's a 30 minute session and everybody knows on these 30 minute sessions it's freaking high octane high energy right and these people come and they're ready they're ready to go ready to go to war they probably just had five coffees Guaranteed that 30 minutes is going to be horrendous. You're going to be doing burpees, you're going to be doing jump squats, you're going to be doing sprints. Diane, that's 45, that's never been to the gym before in her life. Do you really think she should be doing all that crazy shit? Or is it going to cause dramas to the joints? Group sessions, basically. Um, it's not individualised. It can work really well, obviously, if it's delivered by me. I make sure that the... the, 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 the um, the exercise selection um, disregards your mobility and can still provide exercise choices that work your joints through a full range of motion in strength or hypertrophy rep ranges. But who cares about me and my delivery? Um, next one. You're eating shit. So the food industry is designed to confuse the living daylights out of you walking down the aisles and you just haven't got a clue what's going on what's healthy gluten free lactose free all of that bollocks just avoid the lot just because it's gluten free doesn't mean it's healthy just because it's lactose free doesn't mean it's healthy just because it's high protein bollocks you're still eating a chocolate bar that says high protein you expect it to be healthy no what i mean by this in regards to your joint joint health and joint strength is that it it comes down to comes down to if you're eating inflammatory foods or anti-inflammatory foods. Now, yeah, that's mental. I know that's mental because the certain foods will actually create inflammation in the body. And I'm going to give you a little bit of depth here because I've got it in the locker. Think about this, right? Say you're eating chicken. Chicken has got low fat. You know, everybody knows and appreciates chickens hasn't got much fat, especially if you're eating the breast. Um, but think about the life that that chicken has had. And I know this is getting a bit deep, but we know, we all know what happens to a chicken. Like, they get fought, they get a pipe rammed down their throat and they're getting force fed, you know, grains and drugs to give them some muscle size. Do they have a stressed life? So would it be fair to say the cells that their body, you know, morphs into is as a result of stress? And we eat that. We eat that stress. We consume that. We consume them cells. So that stress is then transferred onto us. And that, uh, basically, chicken, chicken is low in fat, but it's extremely high in omega-6. It's because the fat that they store is a direct result of a ridiculous amount of stress that's been placed on that animal. <laughs> it's fucking brutal, really. So, yeah, chicken is low in fat. I'm not saying don't eat chicken. I'm just saying be aware. Obviously, organic free-range options are a lot lower in this omega-6, which is an in inflammatory fatty acid. Um, and stuff like beef and that, you know, um, the food industry, the the... It's not. It's not agriculture. Yeah, the, the the meat industry and stuff like that, cattle and stuff. To make them bigger, really quickly, you feed your cattle grains, and yeah, that's all great. But the fat that that beef will store will be high in omega six, which was, is is again, it's an inflammatory fatty acid. So then you get your um, organic and your free range. Um, sorry, your grass fed beef. Uh, grass-fed mints and stuff like that which is a lot lower in this omega-6 because the animals that you were eating have lived a less stressed life so when you eat them your body is less stressed by the fats in particular that was a little bit of detail a little bit of depth but hopefully a little bit of a light bulb moment because you actually appreciate the food that you eat actually you become you know the, the typical phrase you are what you eat Another thing as well, these oils and these fatty acids are also in all sorts of processed foods. Um, one brand that I actually really like, I think they're doing some really good work, is Huel. And 
he will have a really good protein, like a, a really good meal replacement powder. But the bottled shakes, I think like third ingredient in, they have rapeseed oil. And rapeseed oil, again, ridiculously high in omega-6. If you're having excessive omega-6, your joints will feel sore. And over the span of about five years, your joints will then become absolutely fucked. <laughs> and you haven't even really done that much wrong other than just eat inflammatory foods. So you're thinking you're injured. You're thinking you're injured. You're thinking that you've got, you know, you need to go to, you go to the doctors, they give you some tablets, anti-inflammatories, because, and all that needed is dressing was just you needed your food tweaking a little bit. You go to the doctors, they give you anti-inflammatories, and it's just like, honestly, carnage. And you know what the doctors do, especially if you're in America or um, Australia? They want you to get surgery. right? You go to a knee surgeon and start saying, oh, my knee's sore, and he's looking at, his, he's looking at dollar signs, guaranteed. Because a little bit of keel, 45 minute operation, makes him about three grand. Why wouldn't he do that? Why wouldn't he just poke his scalpel in there and then send John your way? Why wouldn't he do that? Like, the businessmen. The, the, the GPs <laughs> sell you tablets and the surgeons sell you procedures. And I'm here, a free YouTube video, to sell you the solutions. So I'm going to go back. What links all of these things? Right. Too old, not doing anything. You have weak joints and muscles. This type of training. This type of training provides usually really short term hormones. I like to do these sessions for people when they are very spent, they're very high performing individuals. And it's like, it's like, Paul, look, I just, I've got an hour. I've had a fucking horrible week at work. I just want some hormones for the rest of the day. And, you know, just to send me in a good mood, put me in a good mood for the rest of the weekend. This type of stuff I'll be doing for them individuals. Um, but it shouldn't be the bulk part of your training. Because if you're thinking about feeling, then long term, you're going to, you're going to run into some problems. Sports and hobbies. Why do you do your sports and hobbies? Because it makes you feel good. It's the best thing ever. You know, rock climbing, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You've got a whole social circle in as part of these sports and hobbies. It's a whole new skill set. These things make you feel good. Fitness classes, atmosphere, you know, buzz, music, feelings. Eating shit makes you feel good. Pizza. Makes you feel amazing. <laughs> so, what links all of these? These things you do because because it makes you feel good. And because you're not really thinking long term. So now you probably feel absolutely depressed and you're probably getting the rope out and looking for a nice a nice rafter to start um start tying this rope. And just, but there is one solution which will address every single one of them. This is a very good solution, actually, and that's my program. But I'm not going to go into that. If you want to know about my program, just jump on a call with me, and we can go through it in great detail. So the solution to all of these is to get strong. I've written, a, I've done a video on how to build your own program, and it's important that, like I said, Keith, that's age fifty-five, doesn't just go into the gym and get strong. Like he, he actually, he actually does a phase before a strength training block, and it's important that you do the prep, the the prep work, so then your muscles and your joints are all working effectively, so then you earn the right to strength train. I hope you can appreciate that getting strong will help out with all of these issues. So 
this issue here doing nothing you're just going to crumble your joints are just going to crumble strength again addresses weak muscles and joints the greater your strength the the, the greater your capacity to do all of these stuff right let's say for example you do a run three times a week now if you've done one run and you did two um, resistance based effective strength training sessions then you'd improve your longevity within these areas you wouldn't get runner's knee you wouldn't have shin splints because you're addressing the strength of the muscles that surround the joints you would if you address the strength as well you would actually become faster at endurance based sports because Say, for example, let's say Mo Farah, right? A terrible example, but I'm going to try and just wing this. Let's say Mo Farah can squat 30 kilograms, which is half of his body weight. And I can squat 90 kilograms, which is, you know, which is my body weight. I can move my body weight better than he can move his body weight so at that point when you then when you then start to condition yourself back into these endurance based training sessions you might lose a little bit of strength yes of course you will but you will still be better off than where you started which is usually really really weak and it's one of the reasons people do endurance based sessions because it doesn't require any strength buying so like i said there what one thing links all of them together feeling the reason people are doing them things is because of emotion they make you feel good it makes you feel good that your joint your knees are sore after a day at work your knees are sore so I sit on the sofa and watch TV. That makes me feel good. I say that I'm getting old. It makes me feel good. That's, all, that's what all my mates say. Have I missed any? Have I missed any? Have I missed anything? Anything at all that I've missed on them things that speed up the destruction the demise of your joints. Um, put them in the comments and yeah, we'll have a talk about them. So like I've said, the solution is that you get yourself in the gym and you're probably looking going, do I have to go into the gym? Yes, you have to go into the gym. If you want results fast, like everybody wants results fast, if you want results as fast as possible, you get a gym membership. By training your muscles and your joints in the gym you will get results three times faster than you will do in bodyweight training and then you're probably going to say to me straight away yeah but can i just do some bodyweight stuff just to get started no <laughs> no don't waste any time and now all these excuses start coming in but but yeah, but look, if you are sore and you think, ah, but, but wait till it make me feel more sore. It doesn't matter if you're not sore, weights will make you feel sore. If you're a beginner lifter, doing weights will make your joints and muscles sore. That's the idea. But the human body is absolutely amazing and it will adapt and it will get stronger. That is a guarantee. I'm going to go into a little story about one of my mates, one of my close mates. He's, um, he's just over 50 year old and he was on the way. This is the NHS for you. So for you American gentlemen who are listening, just appreciate the, the side of the coin that we have available to us in, in the UK with the NHS. So he... Again, he's neglected all of this stuff. He had the same excuses as you. I'm too old. I'm late eating the wrong foods. You know, worked as a gardener for years. Didn't really move his joints through a full range of motion. Didn't really care about being strong or anything like that. His knee started to cause him, cause him some dramas. 
you know, two or three years of that, two or three years of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He ends up going to see the doctor, doctor gives him tablets, doesn't recover, goes to see a physio, physio refers him to a surgeon. The surgeon's like this. Anyway, he gets, a, he gets put on a waiting list for knee surgery. Um, finds out the date for his knee surgery, it's in like eight months time. So he's like, happy days. So he goes back to the doctors. Um, his other knee's fucked now. Because, I don't know, why? Because he doesn't do this strength training. He doesn't go to the gym. He's 50 year old. How many 50 year olds do you know that go to the gym? Anyway, his other knee starts giving him gym. He goes to the doctors. The doctor sends him a physio. Physio sends him to the same surgeon. Surgeon goes, right, okay. We'll get your other knee booked in for the month after. So he's like, right, cool. Right, so both knees are now booked in. Anyway. Six, seven months, uh, sorry, seven or eight months comes down. He's on his right knee this time, goes and gets surgery on his um, on his right knee. Surgery's successful, yeah, whatever. Then what happens? COVID happens. He doesn't get his other knee fixed for another two and a half years. So those of you that are in the UK thinking, yeah, but healthcare's free, it is what it is. It's not fucking free because... You're losing money. You're not going to work. He was. He couldn't work for three years. His knee was fucked. So he's lost six figures. Easy six figures. 150k. And for what? Because he was lazy. I have no sympathy. I only have sympathy for people if they've had like a you know a car crash or something like that, a really high impact, something that wasn't something that they couldn't avoid. This stuff is avoidable. Swear to God, this stuff is avoidable. Um, so yeah, there's the numbers there. Obviously, you can do your um, calculations and change them to Aussie. You know, times them by two, times them by about one point three if you're in the US. I honestly think the waiting lists are worse than paying private. These prices are private UK prices. Um, anyway. What I do is to oppose this, and my program is to allow you to continue to do all these amazing things that you want to do, because the last thing I want is for you to be fucking sat at home, lonely, a shit husband, miserable father, because you're on a waiting list for surgery. Most things, most things are avoidable, but it gets to a point where, you know, surgery is unavoidable, and, what was I going to say, there was another thing I was going to say, yeah, limitations as well, there's a lot of limitations out there that are not permanent limitations. Like you can literally, if you've got, I've looked at studies on certain versions of arthritis in the knee. If you strengthen one of your muscles on the out, on just above your knee, you can you can massively help that joint. If it's already weak, you can still. What can you do? What can you do to strengthen the the muscles around the knee? And yes, okay, that joint is now fucked. Let's say you've got a permanent limitation. I'm talking about chronic arthritis. That joint is now fucked. It's probably got deformities and all sorts in it, right? Proper fucked. You've probably already had surgery. This is worst case scenario. But even then, do you say to yourself, right, I've got a joint there that's fucked. The tendons are fucked. The, the muscles, sorry, not the muscles. The, um, the bones are starting to become deformed because this, you know, this really bad disease, chronic arthritis. Is there a way I can somehow strengthen the muscles that surround the knee in order to give that joint a bit of relief, a bit more st stability? Is there any... Yes, there, now, now you're starting to get down the realm of this. 99% of people, 99.9% .9 of people, there is a small, a tiny amount of people that... 
physical training will be will be um, will be detrimental to their to the health of their strength and sorry the health of their joints will be those 0.1 percent of people. Um, yeah, and like I said earlier on, men, you're already fighting an uphill battle to you know reverse this decline of type 2b muscle fibers those responsible for power speed and strength that is already hard enough as it is now it's up to you whether you want to make it harder for yourself by either continuing on this path or making the changes that i'm talking about gentlemen if you made it this far in the video thank you very much for watching the video hopefully you found it useful I enjoy doing this. I enjoy doing it every single day. If you like this type of stuff, subscribe to the channel. Do not miss out. Like I said, the audio quality is good. You don't really need to watch the lectures. You can digest more when you're watching. However, you can just listen to these videos because they are about 20 minutes, 30 minutes long. So it's something that you can just put your headphones in and you can just listen to me and we can get through this and get you all the tools you need to make the positive changes in your life.